Hey, it's Diane, I and I Studio. Today I am making mud birds. This is something I've been doing actually my whole life. These tiny little birds are made out of the adobe clay um, that you can find in your backyard, most likely. Um, I first started making mud birds as a child when I went on a field trip to um, Mission Solano in Sonoma. And uh, they explained to us how they had made the tile roofs by uh, mixing grasses with adobe clay and um, shaping it over their thighs, drying it in the sun. And those roof stuck tiles are still there to this day. So I went home as a child, I made a pot and a duck in my backyard and they stayed on my garage windowsill my entire life growing up. So uh, I, I started again in graduate school, made a, a circle of, of the clay birds and put them on the floor. They were beautiful. And I've been making them ever since. So it's a great rainy day project. We're having a great rainy day and I'll tell you what you need. This is the dried adobe. Pour it in here. You just need a bucket of bucket of dirt. See? Um, so I need to reconstitute it with water. So I'll pour some water in and, and let that rest for a while. Now I am gonna find some debris in this dirt that as I'm kneading the dirt, as I would clay, I'll just be picking out rocks. You don't have to worry, this isn't baked. You don't have to knead the bubbles out. There's nothing that can explode. There's no kilns involved. You need a little grass. And um, I found that sawdust works really well. So I'm gonna throw in a couple of hands full of sawdust. These long pieces of uh, grass are too long for what I want. I like to cut it real fine. Maybe a quarter inch. Pick the long ones out. And just get some fine, fine grass shavings in there. sticks from a sycamore tree. Um, I like the quality of these. They're gnarly and knotted and some have moss on them. Sometimes I use sticks to embellish the birds. I don't know if you can see this one. I have a little couple of sticks sticking out by his feet. I've embellished them with feathers and there's a lot of things that you can do to decorate them. Um, there's no right and wrong way. It's playing in the mud. That's all it is. So once I get my ingredients in the bucket, I just start squeezing it and mushing it up. It doesn't feel quite wet enough. And then I'll get to a point where it's too wet and I'll have to add some more dirt. It's a little bit like a combination between making pie dough and uh, reconstituting clay. Still not uh, coming together yet. I, I found a big rock, that'll come out. There are some sticks in here that will come out. Yesterday when I was doing this, I thought I'd probably have to wait a day until the, the Adobe got soft enough, but it, it got soft pretty fast. And I was able to make six birds yesterday. And my goal is to make six more today. And once they dry, <clears throat> air dry, I usually put them in the oven also at about 200 degrees. 
for a couple hours. At that point, I'll attempt to glaze them, uh, paint them, I should say. Um, and this one is, is a painted bird that I had done a couple years ago. Okay, I've got the mud <clears throat> blended. I've taken out quite a few rocks and sticks and set them aside. And um, I like the way it feels now. It's not too sticky. It, it won't really stick to your hands. You can form a ball. <clears throat> and um, put it on my table and I just, I need it a little bit like I would need clay. <clears throat> and like I was saying, don't worry about getting bubbles out of it, it really doesn't matter. I'm more needing it to blend it a little better and to feel if there's any little sticks or rocks I need to remove. Get a good uh, baseball size ball in your hand and then um, just start shaping it. I like to feel what the bird feels like in my hand. I don't have a particular bird species in mind. Sometimes I think about, oh, this looks a little like a mockingbird. And I'll play off of that a little bit. I was thinking about mockingbird fledglings yesterday. So it's a beautiful, beautiful consistency. As you can see, I have a gorgeous adobe ball here. So let's see what happens. As I'm working it, I may come across some sticks or rocks I want to take out. You can do anything you want with this. There's no right or wrong, no rules. I like the birds to feel nice in my hands. I was thinking of a bird with the wings going down and back like this. A little fledgling who is waiting for mommy or daddy to come home and give them a little something to eat. And I like to keep the mud sort of rough looking. I, I don't want a real smooth and refined look. If that's what I was after, I would get clay or sculpy or something else, but these are mud birds. <clears throat> Some people ask me, can you put the birds in the garden? It's hard to say, you know, they shaped the adobe tiles over their thighs and put them on the roof for years and years. The birds probably would hold up fine in the garden. I haven't put them in the garden. I keep mine in the house. I love the mockingbird's big mouth. And the baby's big mouth is so cute. And then I think of little indentations for the eyes. I don't get specific. I don't really put specific eyes on it. They're very rough, like I said. And the ones that I've been doing these past couple days are, are little fledglings, so they're fat and squatty. So you just rough them in, rough them in until they feel right. I raised a little mockingbird when I was at, uh, in junior high. So I got real familiar with that cute little bird. He's getting there, he's getting a nice shape. Think about the chest and how the chest kind of swells up. There's a little indent down here. <clears throat> He's shaping up to be a beautiful little, little fledgling. I don't want to overwork him too much. Um, He's getting there, that's for sure. Then I kind of put some fingerprints in to indicate roughly feathers. The babies have a downy feather. It looks kind of messy. Let's see if I can imitate that a little bit with my fingerprints. A little pinch a little fold in his tail down here. And I'll smooth out the back a little bit. He 
these are rougher than the ones I made last year, um, which really were quite, quite smooth in the long run and, and glazed up nicely. So these ones are rougher and I don't really know what to expect with, when I put the, it's not glaze, it's a paint. Um, and then I'm wondering what kind of paint I might put on, but that remains to be seen. There will be a few days of drying time and then we'll figure it out. So I have 20 of the Mudbirds. Each one has its own personality. And they're all about the size of most of the birds in my backyard. They're a little smaller than maybe a mockingbird would be. And I've wondered how I was going to paint the birds. I've throughout the years done all kinds of treatments and this one has been my favorite. This is a process of painting the bird white and then letting that dry, dipping it in um, or going over that with a um, paint spray and then taking that and washing the paint spray off the high points of the bird and it sticks in the low points. And, and, I, and I do like that treatment. One of the original birds that I made, um, I just left in the original play. Um, some call it Cobb. It, it's fun to look at how far I've come with the detail of the birds. This one has almost no beak whatsoever. And now the beaks have become very, um, very defined. I've really uh, begun to understand the structure of the bird after just shaping so many birds with my hands. I can feel the spirit of the bird. So what I've done is I began to paint my birds with gesso, just a professional white gesso. And as I was doing that, I started leaving some of the cob or the mud showing through. So that's where I'm at now. I'm gonna go ahead, paint the birds, let them dry outside. I want them to be thoroughly dry. And then I'm gonna go over the top with the Payne's gray and then rinse the gray off and see what we have. After that, I'll probably seal it with some kind of a, of a sealer. But you, you have to experience these birds in your hands. They can't be just seen, they have to be held. They really do feel like birds in your hand. And it's fun because um, I made them a week ago and as they dry, they become lighter. They lose so much of their weight in water. And as they get lighter, they feel even more bird-like to me. So I um, basically just take the gesso and it's a little tricky because the birds are so bumpy. And what I'm thinking of now is just kind of hitting the higher points of the birds and letting letting some of that cob show through. It really is a wonderful material. It's kind of a shame to cover it all up. So you can see I actually put a little indentation for an eye and the eye doesn't fill in with the gesso so the eye becomes more pronounced. I haven't always put eyes on the birds. Um, but lately, uh, as I was making this batch, I started with some of them to put eyes and another thing that I'm doing is on some of them, I put sticks. So this one's kind of sitting in a, in a nest of sticks. I, it's not new. I did that with the original birds that I had done. I put little sticks and some people thought they were feet. To me, they weren't necessarily feet. I've never put feet on the birds. They were just, uh, a stick that the bird was perched on. 
All right, I, I got all 20 of these birds kind of um, gessoed and left a lot of the mud showing through. The next step, I'm going to use paint spray, acrylic paint, this is golden, and I'm going to blend it with a little uh, polymer medium gloss. I don't know that that's particularly necessary. The process is to paint the birds with the paint spray and then to dip them in a bucket of water to wash it off. So let's give it a go. Now for this process, I think you really kind of want to push the paint into the little nooks and crannies because that's where it's going to stay. And in the high areas, theoretically, it should wash off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a couple just to give it a little bit of a chance to set up before I rinse it off. Otherwise, I think it could uh, could rinse off too thoroughly and I don't want that to happen. So at this point I have a little bluebird. Get a couple more bluebirds going. Now these ones that I left the mud showing, the cob showing, that's in the low points and I don't think I'm really going to push the blue paint in there because that would undermine my leaving the earth mud showing. So I'm kind of just quickly giving them a coat. Let's do one more and then see what we get when we dip them. They're so cute. Each one is very individual. They all have a personality. I don't know if these birds are bringing me back to my childhood. What it is exactly about these birds that I keep coming back to year after year after year. Okay. She's a little paper towel. I have a little shop towel just in case I need it. Kind of blot him for with the towel. Very nice. And that's the outcome. That's the bird in all of its glory. It was kind of a quick dip and wipe. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a polymer gloss and put that over the top. Very nice. Looks kind of natural. I've tried painting details on the birds. It just looks a little contrived, being that the birds are so natural. I mean, they're made out of mud. So it didn't feel right to me to deliberately paint them. You're a cutie. You're real cute. You know that. See? Kind of pops the details out. So that's it. 
That's the Mudbirds. I hope you enjoyed the process. Stay tuned. Please follow me. Be safe and be happy.